<clears throat> let me share my screen. Okay, um, so welcome to the Telehealth Strategies to Maximize HIV Care, Advancing Equity Through Telehealth Coordination in the Ryan White HIV AIDS Program, Site Selection Committee Orientation. Um, thank you all for being here today. So we have a combination of JSI staff, as well as a couple of external reviewers um, on the call today. And this is also being recorded so that folks who are not able to attend can review it. And of course, if you are attending today, also be available for you to review in the future if you need it. So this is our agenda for today. We're gonna to do some quick introductions just so we can get to know the folks that aren't normally on our team calls. We'll do a quick high-level overview of what, it, what is the SPENS project and what is the telehealth project. Uh, we'll take a little bit of a deep dive into the actual request for proposal that we have uh, put out there for people to apply to. And then we'll talk about the scoring tool that we were, we're asking each of you to use as you review application submissions. And then we'll close out with a question and answer section. So let's do some introductions to start out with. Uh, just really briefly, you can, help, can tell us your name and your preferred pronouns and just where you're joining us from today. I'll go ahead and start. My name is Travis Barnhart, and I am a senior consultant at JSI, working on the telehealth project. Um, I use he, they pronouns, and I'm joining you from Arlington, Virginia. I will pass it over to Natalie. Hi, everyone. Natalie Truesdell. I'm with JSI. I use she, her pronouns, and I am an advisor on this project um, with uh, bringing my telehealth lens to the work, um, and I am joining from Portland, Maine, Let's and I will pass it to Megan. Hi, everyone. I'm Megan O'Meara. I am a project associate on the project with JSI. I'm joining from Massachusetts, and my pronouns are she, her. I will pass to Emily. Hey, everybody. Good afternoon. I'm Emily Comstock. I'm an external consultant with JSI. I use she, her pronouns, and I'm joining from Woodstock, Vermont. I will pass it to, let's see, Erin. Hi, everyone. I'm Erin Starzik, she, her, hers. I am a senior consultant and the evaluation lead on this project. And I am from Wayne, Pennsylvania, which is right outside of Philadelphia. And so I will pass it to Michael Pearl. Hi, um, Michael Pearl, he, him, his, and I am from Denver, Colorado. And I will pass it to Melissa. Hi, everyone. My name is Melissa Dilos. My pronouns are she, her, hers. Um, I am a project associate with JSI, and I'm joining from Boston, Massachusetts. I will pass it to Michelle Joy. Hi, everyone. My name is Michelle Joy Alfonso, and I use the She series, and I am joining from Attleboro, Massachusetts, and I'm with JSI, I'm a project associate. And I will pass it to Amory. Hi, everybody. I'm Amory Rakovic. Um, I use she, her, and I'm the project manager for this telehealth project. And I'm from New York City, New York. And I will pass it to Dekitra. Hello, Dekitra Griffin. Come to you from Dallas, Texas, pronouns he, him, his. Uh, I think I'm mistaken. Nope, that's it. Thank you. Um, I believe we got everybody. Um, if you, oh, sorry, Gretchen. Okay. <laughs> I'm on two different screens with people. So. Oh, that's totally fine. Hey, everyone. Gretchen Weiss. Um, I use she, her pronouns. I'm in Washington, D.C. I'm with JSI. I'm the project director for the initiative. Thank, Thank you. you. Yep. All right. Uh, so again, welcome in all. Uh, so you're aware we will have 12 uh, folks seated on our site selection committee. 
Eight of those folks will be internal JSI uh, subject matter experts. As you might've heard uh, Natalie say, like she's an expert in telehealth. Several of us are considered subject matter experts in HIV. So we, as a group, we come together with lots of expertise. But we also have, we'll have four external reviewers, which are folks with lived experience. So Dikitra and Michael, thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, we will have two others uh, who were able to make it to the orientation today, but will be participating in the site selection committee. So we really appreciate your assistance with this uh, project. All right. Okay, so moving on, I wanted to do a high level overview of what are we asking you to do and what is the timeline as part of the um, site selection committee. Uh, so before I even start in this, I should say that we don't know how many applications we're going to get in. They're due a week um, on Monday the 8th. Um, we have received one so far, but we are anticipating receiving more based on the letters of interest that we've received, as well as just questions that we've had coming in since we've released the RFP. Um, our hope is that we will have enough to across the 12 committee members to have everyone review up to five site applications, but no more than five. Um, if we get way less applications than we're anticipating, we may have to narrow down the site selection committee a little bit. Um, but those of you who received external reviewers who received an email from me, I hope that was clear in the email. Uh, what else are we asking of you? We would like you to keep all information confidential and also let us know about any conflicts of interest. I'll talk about that a little bit later in the slide deck when we get to that point. Um, but this is a comp most important, it's a confidential uh, process. We obviously don't want you taking the applications that you are reviewing and share those widely, um, put them out on LinkedIn or Facebook, that kind of thing. Um, they do need to stay in just your, your um, access through your computer and not share it outside of that. Also, we're asking you to be objective, thorough, and fair in your review. Um, that's partly goes into the conflict of interest as well, that if you have some kind of special relationship with one of the sites, we do need to know about that because we know it can be challenging to be objective if you have a relationship with someone. And we definitely want you to share your observations. That's why we have you as part of this uh, site selection committee. You'll notice throughout the scoring tool that there are many places where you can include your comments. You're more than welcome to also, if you, know, you don't feel like that space is enough for you, type up in another document and an email and send those along. There is also a good chance that we will convene the site selection committee on May 19th. Uh, I think I have that, right, that date right. May, Friday, May 19th uh, for a um, about an hour long convening to talk about any sites that need to be discussed. So please speak up during that as well and have fun. You may, hopefully if you're on the site selection committee, you do find this process kind of fun. But at least we hope that you feel good that you're doing something to uh, contribute to an important process um, along with us. So our key dates coming up, um, as I mentioned earlier, this coming Monday, May 8th, application submissions are due from the sites and those are due by 11.59 p.m. Eastern time. Anybody who does not get their application in by that time will not be eligible for this um, opportunity. We've made that very clear in the request for proposals document. Okay, so once we get those in, JSI staff on May 9th and possibly into May 10th will be when we will uh, review, do a high level review of the applications, put together application packets and get those emails sent out to the different members of this committee so that you can start your review process. <clears throat> You'll then have a, a week, possibly eight days, depending on when we get those out before the site selection workbooks are due back to JSI. I'll explain this again later, but there is nothing will be nothing for you to email you'll be accessing everything through google drive unless of course there's some accessibility issues there um but you will uh, we we will ask that you just send us a quick note that says hey i'm done with the review process um, when you are done I'll, I'll remind everyone about that in the emails that go out on may 9th and 10th um, and then again, we may have and probably will have a convening on May 19th at 3 p.m. to talk about um, the applications as well. 
So now we're going to jump in uh, to talk about, first of all, what is SPINS and then what is the telehealth project about? So in case you haven't heard of it before, SPINS stands for Special Projects of National Significance. It's a um, program through the Ryan White HIV AIDS program that HRSA oversees through the HIV AIDS Bureau. And really the point of these projects is to support a very quick um, or the development of innovative models of HIV care and treatment that quickly respond to emerging needs. So it's outside of the formula ways in which Ryan White is funded to states and metropolitan areas and clinics, um, really to look at what are some of those emerging interventions and strategies that are happening um, to address current emerging needs that are going on. An interesting thing about SPENS projects is that they also include an evaluation component. So they want us to look at how are these interventions, these implementations of interventions going, but also not just saying, hey, it was really great. Everyone really liked it. We actually want to put some research and some study behind it so that we can show whether it was effective or not. So you'll notice as we talk about this project in particular, there's components that are both about an intervention implementation as well as an evaluation <clears throat> evaluation component. This project in particular, which I won't keep calling it by the full 20 word name that we have for it, um, I'll just refer to it as the HIV Telehealth Project. Um, it was um, funded or announced, I should say, in fiscal year 2022 by HRSA. Um, and they announced uh, that after we applied for it, we, we accept, were accepted as the evaluation and technical assistance provider, JSI was accepted in that role. The overall purpose of this initiative is to identify and maximize the use of telehealth strategies that are most effective in improving linkage to care, retention in care, and health outcomes, including viral suppression, for people with HIV who receive services through the Ryan White HIV AIDS program. You'll notice that I have some links at the bottom of some of these slides. In addition to the recording, I'll also make the slides available to everyone so you can click on those links as you're reviewing. <clears throat> so overall, this project has five different objectives. Some of this work, uh, just so you're aware, is work that JSI um, has done internally prior to even getting to the point of asking for site applications. Some of the work we will do in conjunction with the funded sites. Um, in case you're about that. So one thing um, you know that should be pretty obvious is this project really wants us to identify telehealth strategies that are best suited for different Ryan White clients or populations. Um, also, it really wants to look at how we can we increase the utilization of effective telehealth modali modalities and strategies within the program. Um, how can we disseminate those, increase the dissemination of those strategies and tools that work really well with across different Ryan White programs? How can we increase the capacity of Ryan White recipients and sub-recipients to identify and impl implement effective telehealth strategies? And uh, this last point is very important and really kind of runs through everything that we're doing with this project. How can we increase equity and in HIV care for people who have not yet successfully maintained in care or populations that have historically experienced poor health outcomes. <clears throat> Excuse me. So one thing that we narrowed things down in our research that uh, JSI did uh, for, in terms of the implementation, the intervention that we want sites to focus on is through our research, we finally uh, settled on telehealth coordination. So um, what that involves is the coordination of multiple staff, patients, space, equipment, and technology to make telehealth successful. Um, in this project, we'll be asking sites to talk about their telehealth coordinators, whether they already currently have something in place for that or they're enhancing that um, in some way. Um, but the telehealth coordinators will be an integral part to the success of the daily program operations for this program, um, really focusing on coordination, coordinating between patients and providers so that the visits run smoothly. And you'll probably notice this as you start looking at different applications. We weren't, we didn't dictate real strongly what that role had to look like. So it's not standardized and we didn't lay out specifically like it has to be a, a case manager or it has to be a nurse or a peer, et cetera. Um, 
So sites will let us know in many ways what their teleoperator coordinator positions are going to look like, and they may look different from each other. Um, but they do have specific responsibilities around, you know, involved with telehealth delivery. Um, we do have some information about that laid out throughout the RFP, as you'll see. Okay, that was a very quick overview of that. Um, I do encourage you to visit the uh, telehealth, our telehealth um, webpage on targethiv.org and read through the RFP before you uh, review applications. But as I mentioned earlier, those are linked in the slides. <clears throat> okay, so let's talk about the actual RFP document or the request for proposals. So uh, these are slides that were largely pulled from a, the orientation that we did for uh, sites when we released the RFP um, to explain what the eligibility was, what the expectations were, et cetera. Um, I will mention that we have changed some of the language in here. I'm not going to go into that in a lot of depth, but it used to, instead of saying HIV primary care, I uh, used to say outpatient ambulatory health services. If you have questions about why that change, I can always answer those for you. Or you can also uh, refer to our frequently asked um, questions document that's on target HIV. So what is the eligibility for the sites? Um, first of all, they do have to be a current Ryan White funded recipient or sub-recipient. They can be funded through any part of the Ryan White program, A, B, C, or D or be a sub-recipient for one of those programs in their local jurisdiction. They do have to have provided HIV primary healthcare services, or I, they should be currently providing those, I should say. And they have to have routine, routinely conducted telehealth video visits for HIV primary healthcare services in the last year. So as you're reading through application submissions, um, this is something that will hopefully be very obvious to you that they have done these things. We've asked them to um, explain that to us in the application. So what are the required components? Some of this might be a little seem like a little bit of review of what I've said, but this is the actual language that went out to the sites. Um, they need to implement and adapt telehealth coordination strategies using a telehealth coordinator or similar staff position. They do have to have and discuss the evaluation component, so evaluating the implementation and the outcomes of telehealth coordination strategies in accordance with the multi-site evaluation protocol. That sounds like a lot of fancy words, I know. Basically, we have, five, as again, again mentioning, we will have five sites. We'll be looking at things across those five sites of what works for telehealth uh, coordination, so that's what that multi-site is referring to. They'll also be required to participate in project meetings and other technical assistance activities led by JSI. So um, what the important thing that you'll, you may see there is just as you're reviewing, uh, particularly when they talk about budget, they may be talking about going to different meetings or putting money aside for evaluation activities in addition to the telehealth coordination intervention. So priority populations, this is a big question that's come up. Uh, with our sites, um, because we do ask sites to identify at least one priority population. However, JSI did not dictate what uh, those prior priority populations will, should look like when we put the RP out. Um, so how are sites going about that? They need to use really their local data to determine which priority populations they should focus on. Um, earlier, we did talk about making sure that there's equity in the provision of telehealth services. So we're encouraging sites to really think about what are populations that you're have are coming to your HIV primary care health clinic who are not achieving the health outcomes at the same level as other folks, and how can you help them help all populations with equity achieve those? So we want to make sure that they're focusing those activities on again, on those who have not successfully maintained in care and or populations that historically experienced poor health comes um, so they're not further marginalized as telehealth progresses. So strategy implementation for them, um, they need to obviously implement the telehealth coordination intervention that they're describing. Um, as they're looking at their patients, we did establish some eligibility requirements there. So first of all, 
they should be approaching all the patients at their site who are clinically eligible to receive telehealth services. Um, part of that is they have to be a Ryan White client of some sort. Um, they do be, need to be living with HIV. Uh, because this is a research component, we really do want um, adults, so 18 years of age and older. There's other components we'd have to include if we included youth. And that they receive HIV primary health care services at the, the site that's being funded or at the partner site, because there is a possibility for a partner organization. We set a goal for each site to have at least 110 patients per site throughout the uh, two years of implementation of the project. Uh, we, are, we are willing to be flexible with that. We do recognize that that might be challenging for sites to reach that level, but at least primarily that's where we're starting out with each site. And we'll provide a lot of technical assistance of course around that. So let's talk about <clears throat> some of the evaluation requirements now. So each site will uh, work with JSI or collaborate with JSI to tailor an evaluation plan that's very specific to their site. You know, we recognize that every jurisdiction is different, every clinic is different, so there may be unique things that one site has over the other. Uh, we do want them to participate in all evaluation trainings. They'll be submitting a monthly data report to us via a system called REDCap. Some of you might be familiar with that. Uh, we do want them to conduct data management throughout the project period and also ensure that their data is complete and um, that they're willing to do the cleanup of data as needed. Because this is a research re um, project in addition, evaluation project in addition to an intervention, there is the requirement for um, an internal, an institutional review board or an IRB. So you'll hear mention of that throughout the application at different points. Um, that relates back to the human subjects research that is involved with this project. <clears throat> so sites must apply for approval of evaluation from an IRB. Um, they may mention in their applications that they have their own IRB that they're planning to work with. JSI has also offered to allow sites to work with our IRB that we're working with. Um, so they may address that in one or the other ways in their application. We'll provide support as we always say, of course. And we do ask that all of their staff who will be involved in the research project complete training on human subjects research. Um, an example of that is what's called the city training, um, and that they have, need to submit their training certificates to us. I mentioned that <clears throat> today because you may see as you're looking through, especially budget materials, that they may have included some funding for evaluation activities, including IRB and uh, trainings for human subject research. Okay, so a little bit of a a little bit of repeat here, but just to make sure everyone's fully clear, um, we are asking them to show us in their staffing how they're going to um, address having a telehealth coordinator. So are they going to hire someone for that? Are they going to assign some staff that are already doing it? Um, the positions and information are very much outlined in section C1 of the RFP. <coughs> Excuse me. And then we also, I've made it clear to them that we want there to be a separation between intervention staff, implementation staff, and evaluation staff. So they do need to let us know if they're hiring or assigning existing staff responsible for those evaluation activities, which include managing data collection and other evaluation activities. <clears throat> and then we need to know who overall is going to be managing the day-to-day -day and the leadership of the project. And ideally that person will be a champion for telehealth uh, who has decision-making authority with the project activities. As reviewers, honestly, you don't need to worry a whole lot about this part. We'll get into the parts that you are actually going through and grading, but you will, I just wanted to share these slides with you that you'll see um, this information included in their application. Okay, so what are we going to ask you to actually score and look at in depth with their application packets? So I mentioned that you will receive an email on either May uh, 9th or 10th next week, um, which will give you access to a folder on our Google Drive. 
um, that only you will only have access if you're an external reviewer to your folder. So you'll only be able to see your scoring sheet and the applications, uh, application packets that I've put in your folder. Um, hopefully everyone's able to access Google. Again, if you're not able to, let me know. Uh, we can work out alternative arrangements, um, but we do prefer that everyone uh, do this process through Google Drive if you're able. Um, so your your email will include, uh, sorry, that's a little bit of a mis, uh, misprint there. It says that it'll include your scoring workbook. It's more that it'll include the link to get to your scoring work, workbook and the application submissions that we've assigned to you. Um, your Google Drive may look different. Your access to Google Drive may look different than the view I've shared here, but what you'll generally do when you click on the link, it'll take you automatically to your folder. This, for example, is Ann Marie's folder who's on the call today, who I shared, shared the tester with, um, just to give you an example of what your folder and its contents will look like. I'm happy to walk anybody through that. If um, you haven't, you're not super familiar with Google Drive and need some assistance. So within each, um, application packet. Um, what I am working on in the background is putting a cover sheet on front on the top of the PDF packet for you that has links via the table of contents to each of the different materials that are in the application packet. So it's really easy to find what you're looking for. Um, one thing to note here is that uh, I, I mentioned earlier, some sites might have a partner organization that they're working with that was not required as part of this project application. So not every site will have partner organizations. If they do not have some of these, um, like for example, attachment C here, the fiscal sponsor agreement, if they don't have that in place because they didn't need it, I will delete that out of the table of contents and you won't have it in your packet. Um, but just, I think throughout the scoring tool, you'll see that it's pretty obvious when something is not applicable, ap applicable uh, depending on uh, if they had a partner or not. Um, hopefully everyone has Adobe, the free Adobe Reader. I did um, provide a link to that here, but if you are reviewing for us and you don't have that yet, I would encourage you to go ahead and download the free Adobe Reader. Okay. All right, then within, this comes from the uh, slides again from the orientation for the RFP, but I just wanted you all to see the full list of what we asked them to submit and some of the requirements. So there is a page limit, um, but that page limit only applies to the proposal narrative, that's or the project narrative. That's these sections here that are highlighted in yellow. Um, so we did ask them to keep it to 15 single space pages using a 12 point font. We have had a question about graphs and charts that if they could use smaller font there, we have told them they can go as small as 10 point font as well for that, that part, but not for the actual narrative. You're not going to be grading that, by the way. You don't have to check the document to go, oh, right here they used, you know, a 10-point font on this heading or whatever. We're not going to ask you to go to that level of granularity. Um, but they should be very much organized by this uh, layout here. Um, again, I will include that cover sheet with each packet um, so you won't have to worry about trying to figure out, like, where's their statement in the, or their project narrative, where's their project abstract, et cetera, et cetera. All right, so this is the main meat and potatoes of what we're talking about and asking you to really work in what we're calling the scoring workbook. So this is a Google Sheets document. If you are unfamiliar with Google Sheets or Excel, they're very similar. Um, I did include a resource I was able to find online here that quickly navigate shows you how to navigate through Google Sheets. So if you need a little refresher, definitely encourage you to um, look at that resource. I think the biggest thing I would say is sometimes if you're not familiar with working in a uh, work workbook or worksheet, um, knowing to look at the bottom of the screen for the different tabs can sometimes be one of the first things that people are like, where, where do I go? I don't, do I click up here? You know, it's all at the bottom down here um, with the tabs. And I'm, tried to make it very obvious by saying start here with 
uh, tab one. Hopefully the document will always open for you on that tab um, so that you know where you're starting. I've also included a little handy checklist here at the top of this first tab um, to help you um, kind of check where you're at in the process of moving through um, scoring the different applications. So that's what you'll hope you'll generally see when you first open that document. And it'll lead you through how to do different things as you scroll through. Ask you to please read the full instructions tab first before you move on to do any of the other um, tasks within the workbook. Um, there is this is one of the very first boxes on there that gives you some instructions. In fact, I think I've already even updated these based on some feedback I got earlier today. Thank you, Anne Marie. Very helpful. Um, we are trying to give you as much clear direction and instruction as we can. Uh, but again, if you have questions, reach out to us at hivtelehealth at jsi.com anytime. Uh, we do monitor that Monday through Friday from I think 8, 8 a.m. to 5.30 p.m., somewhere along those hours, Eastern time. Um, please reach out if you do need assistance. Um, also on that first tab, we do have, or no, I'm sorry, this is on, a, on the next tab, is the confidentiality and conflict of agreement conflict of interest agreement. Uh, we do ask that you read through both sections um, for that. And then at the very bottom, as you're scrolling down, you'll see that there's a yellow box where we ask you to type your first and last name to show that you agree with the confidentiality and conflict of interest agreements. I want to take a moment here to talk about um, both of these. I think the confidentiality one is pretty clear to mo pr pretty much clear to everybody, but we ask a couple of things here, if you look at the numbers that are highlighted in particular, we're asking that you do not, um, well, it says to, that you delete or destroy all materials related to the review process. You can't go in and delete and destroy um, Google Drive. <laughs> um, but what I, I really left that in there, that if you do happen to download something or print out something, just make sure after you're done with the review process that you uh, delete that off your computer. Uh, well, after we, I'm, and I should say after we meet, um, wait till after we meet, um, but delete everything when we're done with this whole review process. Um, you can keep the email that uh, gives you access to your Google Drive. I'm not asking that you delete that. Uh, we do ask that you do not disclose or discuss application materials or funding recommendations outside of the site selection committee. So only with the, the folks that are on the site selection group total. Um, please don't discuss uh, your uh, disclosure or discuss that you've been appointed to the site selection committee with any of the applicant organizations. And if you, again, if you have any inquiries, please contact us at hivtelehealth at jsi.com. Um, don't talk, if you, you know, we don't care if you tell like friends, partners, et cetera, hey, I'm doing this review process. We just don't want you to discuss the details of it, particularly sharing names of organizations, et cetera. Um, the conflict of interest is also important. I don't have the full text here. I apologize. Um, but to quickly review that, um, if you have a relationship of some type, a formal relationship of some type with an applicant organization, especially one of the ones that we've assigned you to review, we need to know about that immediately. What do I mean by a formal formal relationship? So if you've ever been an employee, a volunteer, a board member, a patient, et cetera, at any of the applicant, applicant sites that we've asked you to review, we ask that you go ahead and excuse yourself from that review process and we'll send you a, another site to review instead. Um, also, if you have family members, uh, relatives of other of any kind, um, spouses, boyfriends, girlfriends, close friends, uh, who have also been in a formal relationship with an organization like that, where it would influence or it would be perceived that it might influence your opinion of that organization, go ahead and consider that a conflict of interest as well, and we'll just assign you a, um, a, a different application to review. Um, and then, the, you know, the kind of the third category is for if for whatever reason you just have a really strong opinion about one of the applicant organizations and like you're like oh I love XYZ organization I don't know anything about them but I love them um, and 
you know that that's going to influence your <laughs> judgment or your scoring of them and you're not going to be able to be objective, um, we would consider that a conflict of interest as well. Doesn't mean that if just because you've heard of an organization, you can't <laughs> um, review them or anything like that. We just need to know mostly about those formal relationships. Um, and again, when you scroll to the bottom of this tab, there's going to be a, a box in yellow that we ask you to type your first and last name in to show that you agree with the confidentiality and the conflict of interest um, agreements. I should have mentioned, by the way, if you have immediate questions about anything, I'm totally open to answering those before we get to the Q&A section. Um, just you can either raise your hand or chat or just come off mute since we're a small enough group. But uh, we will also have a Q&A session at the end as well. Okay, moving on to the dashboard. So this is the third tab. It is a really high level or a quick reference um, tab that you can go to uh, for your own reference to see really quickly like, okay, I went through sites A, you know, one, two, and three, and okay, that's what I scored for the total narrative, et cetera. This is the funding recommendation I gave. Um, it's just a quick reference for you. But more importantly, for folks like me who are looking at all of these different documents, it's a very quick reference to be able to see kind of how different sites are doing um, and how different reviewers are moving through the process. Um, so right now, this is a good point place to point out uh, this overall, this workbook, the site uh, scoring workbook is a protected document, meaning you can't go in and just edit or delete information in different cells. It's really been limited to just the cells um, or the boxes where we need you to input some information, such as your name or the name of the sites that you're going to review. <clears throat> so the instruction tabs tab does talk about this, that you can only edit um, cells that are highlighted in yellow or light pink. And I'll explain why there's a light pink uh, here in a bit. Otherwise, what will happen is, let's say you were in your Google Sheet and you tried to type over, sorry, let me go back, tried to type over the cell that says total narrative right here, it will just pop up an, a warning message telling you that you're not able to edit that cell. Um, but if you go in and type in any of these yellow highlighted boxes, it'll let you do that. So you might be saying, well, how are you going to know what I scored? site one with their total narrative uh, score, the funding recommendation, all that, that's all going to carry over from the sheet, um, the site scoring sheet that we're going to talk about here in a second. Uh, you don't have to worry about carrying information from one sheet to another one or one tab to another one. It'll automatically do that for you. All right. And... There's information I should also mention from this that you this particular tab that you'll type in that carries over to the scoring sheets. Hey, Travis, this is Gretchen. I, mm -hmm. I have a question, but it might be something that you think is more relevant to hold until later. And it's sure. just about understanding the 15 point max um, for a partner's narrative mm -hmm. um, being separate from the total narrative. Because, yeah, mm -hmm. I'm not. Is this yeah. to talk about later? Yeah, I'll get to that. Okay. Yeah, that's a common question I've gotten. So thank you for bringing that up. Okay. Yeah, we'll get to that here in just a bit. Okay. Uh, so then this is the uh, site scoring sheet, the top of the site scoring sheet that you'll see um, when you open up those tabs. Each workbook will be set up so it has five um, site scoring sheets total since we're asking folks to score upwards of five, but no more. So you'll see one for each, each um, site. As I mentioned earlier, when you type things into this dashboard here, like the site name and your name, that'll carry over automatically to the correct site scoring sheet so that you can see I'm, okay, this is for, sorry. This is for XYZ organization. And I know it's me because my name's popped up here. Again, because there, none of these cells are yellow up here or pink, you're not able to type into any of those. Any information that's going to populate up here is going to come from further down in the spreadsheet. Um, so the, uh, the site name, reviewer name, name carries over. 
all of this dashboard information, not only does it, the information populate from further down in the sheet, but it also carries back over to that dashboard that I showed you earlier. And um, we've also given you a scoring guide here. So as you're going down through these different points that we're asking you to score, you'll notice that they have anywhere from zero to five points that you can assign to them. And we wanted to give you a bit of a guide on, um, actually, this is an old view of this, sorry. <laughs> I did include the two point scale as well because I realized that we had one question that was zero to two points. Um, but it'll, you'll go through and basically score things either from a zero, meaning they didn't include that in their application or you, you didn't see it or it's not addressed, all the way up to you feel like it was very clearly addressed and um, you couldn't really ask for much more information. Um, so to use that, that scoring guide, all of this information floats at the top or is frozen to the top of the screen as you scroll down. So you'll always have access to that scoring guide as you're moving through the the different sections and scoring them. So again, um, there are some points that, for the most part, the points are for all sites. Those are what I'm calling regular project narrative items. Those are the ones that are in yellow in the your score um, column. However, I did mention earlier, there might be partner agencies. So in order to keep those points separate for partner agencies, I highlighted those particular ones in pink. You can enter again data into yellow or pink cells. Um, I want I took a picture or screenshot here of this just to show you that this is the section total for each section is only going to add up those that come from the yellow cells. That way we're not penalizing sites that don't have partner organizations when we're looking at the project narrative total for all sites. The little pink cells though are also adding up. It's just adding up at the very bottom of the document. So there's a total of three of those pink cells. Each one's worth five points for project agency related items. So they can get a max of 15 points if they have a partner organization. All sites have a, a project narrative total of 100. Um, I know that might be confusing. Happy, happy to clarify on that if we need to. Uh, okay, I'm gonna move on, but feel free if you have questions and wanna type them in the chat or hold them until q and I can get to those for you. All right, so then the very bottom of the site, each site scoring sheet, as you get down here, um, up here a little higher, uh, you'll, we are, okay, so let me back up. We're, again, we're only asking you to score the project narrative when it comes down to it. That was the only part in the RFP that had points assigned to it. Um, that's the part that we're asking the site selection committee to really look at. There are also several attachments that will be included in the packet that you get. We're including those, not so that you have to go through them in depth with a fine tooth comb, for instance. We're not asking you to go through the financial statements, which is usually gonna be a pretty thick packet. Um, as part of the site selection committee, we don't feel like that is your responsibility. We will look through those things internally at, at JSI. We do want you to go ahead and do a check for us though here. Um, there's actually a full list underneath here of all the attachments and just let us know, was it included? Yes, no, partially in your opinion, or there are, I think three, two or three of them that are if applicable. So you can also choose NA not applicable if they didn't apply. Okay, and then the final thing on each of those sheets is that we're asking you to give us a funding recommendation. I have added more um, to this box. Um, you'll see when you get your review sheet to give you some guidance uh, based on the project narrative score of what we recommend recommend that you give for your recommendation. Um, but we're, you know, that's how you score this part is up to you. We just ask again that you're objective and fair in your assessment of whether you think the site should be funded, whether it needs to be discussed, whether they're funded, or you just think they should not be funded. You can also include any comments you'd like down here about why you chose uh, which um, recommendation. 
And again, all as you, as soon as you as you choose, like for instance, on this one, as soon as you choose fund, that's going to pop up there at the top of the um, sheet, as well as carry over to the dashboard. All right. <clears throat> there are a couple of reference tabs. So as you're going through the scoring tool, you'll notice that there um, are two points uh, where it asks the sites to explain what they're going to do based on sections out of the RFP. So they're very wordy sections, as you can see. So I created reference tabs for those that are linked to in that each part, each uh, site selection scoring sheet. So you can quickly click over to that, see what it says, and then come back and um, assess the score that you're giving for that section. <clears throat> Just so you're aware of that. Um, I'm not gonna go through these next couple of slides point by point. Uh, these are the things that we have bulleted out in each section for you to go through. So um, when I went back to the RFP, I pulled each of the bullet points over and um, separated them out. So let me go back to this one slide real quick. So for example, this is the statement of need. There's four different points here. As you can see, at least the top of the statement of need, I folded them out one by one so that you can grade them or score them individually. And each um, point, each um, sub point that you're grading will give you the amount of points that you're able to give um, from zero to three, zero to two, zero to five, whatever the scoring is there. So, we have four different sections that are scored. There's the statement of need, which overall this asks them to explain the overall epidemic in their area, but also get into very specifics about the patient population that they serve and intend to serve. Um, what do they think are gonna be some of the facilitators and barriers in being able to provide the, um, pr the project that they're proposing? Um, they, that's what they'll be describing in that section. The second section is the organizational capacity, which is worth 25 points. Um, this goes more into their experiences with providing telehealth services. Again, remember they have to have provided them prior to this project. Um, going into more information about how they uh, have their history and capacity to serve the priority populations they're talking about and um, the ability to create a, an affirming environment with that population. Continuing on with organizational capacity, we ask about their readiness to implement the project. Um, how are they going? Some of this goes into how are they going to um, be able to handle a cost reimbursement relationship with JSI, um, change man just management efforts. Um, we'll, we'll try to give a little, we will give a little more guidance around that, not try to, we will get more guidance around what that means um, before we send out the review materials for you. And then you'll notice I highlighted this in pink. This is one of those partnering organization points that will be scored only if they have a partnering organization. The third section is the project implementation description. So really diving into how they are going to take what they've done with telehealth already and move forward with that based on what we've asked them to implement in this project. Again, there is a pink highlighted partnering organization um, point in here. Uh, we, this is where they also get into talking about their staffing plan. Um, so you might see references there also to their budget somewhat. Um, important point here, how will their organization meaningfully involve people with HIV? And we do want to see that in both their individual site level, as well as um, we are hoping to engage at the project level. The fourth and final section is the evaluation capacity uh, and description. So going through all of the information for the evaluation component, including the, the staffing plan, um, how they may plan to recruit patients, um, engage patients, keep patients involved, what's their abilities and capabilities around data um, and, and using data. Um, all the evaluation components will be included in that section. <clears throat> and then as I mentioned previously, there are possibly upwards of six 
uh, attachments. They may not have all of these if they do not have a partnering organization. Also, we have not asked you to score the project abstract. That will generally be actually the first page of the applica application package right after the cover page. Um, but again, that cover page will have links in it um, to take you to those different um, documents. Again, we're not asking you to dive in and do a deep uh, assessment of these different uh, attachments and um, documents, really just assessing whether they were included with the applicant package that they were supposed to be. And then <clears throat> here at the end, I just included a slide with the different resources that I mentioned. So we have our uh, webpage on targethiv.org specifically related to this project, an overview of the Hershey Spins project, if you need that free Adobe PDF reader to download, there's a link there, as well as that uh, quick guide on how to navigate through Google Sheets. And now open the floor for any questions that we have, and we have about six minutes. Travis, thanks for that overview. Um, you know, even I'll just say particularly for um, our guests, those that this is newer to, you know, it it is a lot of information to receive in one setting, and it's really helpful. You know, it's important as reviewers um, that we all have a really good sense of what was in the request for proposals, right? What were we asking people to respond to, and then having the scoring align with that. I will say, um, almost to put myself at ease and and anyone else, is that the scoring tool is really well developed so that all of these points are within the tool. It's not so much that you have to like hold in your head, right? You know, Travis, like the tool kind of walks you through each in terms of the alignment with the points. Um, I think that I, I, I have a few, um, a few pieces of like food for thought. And I know that this is like quick turnaround time. And so we are putting some final touches on this. Um, but a few things I'll throw out, and then I really do want to make sure that if Michael or Dakitra has questions now, but also knowing like we're, we're totally here for you as we are all here for each other during this review process, um, is, you know, Travis, I'm thinking about with the attachments, particularly those that are not scored, they're just more administrative, yes, no, you know, did they, um, is that part of that, if that is part of the first kind of cursory check that we're doing before we pass on an application for review, then it might not even be something worthwhile to ask reviewers to check a box for if we've essentially already checked that um, box. And I think the, the other piece that I'm sort of processing right now is the 15 points for the if partnering. And mm -hmm. I, I need to open, but does that mean that if a applicant applies with a partner, their application would be scored out of a total of 115 points? Essentially, yes. Um, so there would be a consideration of how did they do just on their own project narrative with other sites, but also the, the the potential 15 points would need to be taken into consideration as well. Um, I haven't in the, I, I thought I had a screenshot of that, but I've been working on the scoring tool today as well. Um, in the recommendations for how to determine the funding recommendation, I do have now a guide based on the points for both of those sections or both of those point areas. Okay, others may, you know, I'd be interested, obviously, Travis, you've done this a time or two before, and mm -hmm. I know some others as well. I'm also thinking about, you know, like when JSI is applying for funding, and if we go in with a partner, my understanding of the review process in terms of also how we show the points is it's always out of 100. So your partner becomes part of the whole. And that is really how I think about the partnering organization is not that they're not intended to be additive, but part of how you get to 100. So from that standpoint, um, I wouldn't have 15 extra points. And it's not like extra points, right? But then when we look at the scoring altogether, 
are we we're then looking at so it's what apples and oranges right we have to look at the pool that has partners and they're scoring against those that don't and we're really not looking to pit those two groups against each other or not. yeah let's discuss this um outside of this and, and we'll okay. see if we can come up with a solution um and if we go with something else we'll clarify that with everybody okay yeah are there uh, um but did, was that every i'm sorry i didn't mean to cut you off is that everything you had yeah that's okay. yeah for, for now yeah okay um and i i know i this was a very short time frame to go over a lot of information um so if we have any last minute questions today feel free to share those now we also of course will always accept questions through the hiv telehealth email box um Travis, is it going to be like one more get together before we go live into the review process, or is this it? Uh, I hadn't planned on that, but if folks feel like that would be helpful, I'm more than happy to schedule something. I'm just thinking about if you wind up making changes after getting feedback, you know, like people consider this and then get back mm -hmm. to you, it might be good to just have a quick check in so that people are all on the same page, you know. Sure. Yeah, let's see how much things change. I mean, scheduling could be tough and we do have such a tight turnaround time. I think that the beauty of this tool is it really is supposed to be the one-stop shop and really walk all of us through um, what we're supposed to be doing. I think that um, any major changes, such as to the way that we score partners or something like that, could be potentially like bulleted out. And then when we're reviewing, whether it's a JSI person or an external reviewer, if we're struggling with a component of this, just being in touch with Travis to say like, hey, I really need some one-on-one -on -one TA to get through this. Yeah, definitely. All right, uh, we are right at five o'clock and we're gonna honor everyone's time. Um, thank you so much for joining us today. And again, thank you so much for joining the Site Selection Committee. Uh, we look forward to working with everyone and have a good evening. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Great job. Thank you. Thanks, Travis. I know that was a lot.